guys, so I'm here today to do the second part of my October reading wrap up. So I felt like I was reading quite a lot in October and because of that I did a mid-month wrap up in which I reviewed eight or nine books, seven books, I don't know, like a, a pile of books I read in the first half of October. So if you haven't seen that video and are interested in hearing reviews of the books I read in the first half of October, I will link that down below. But we are now here to talk about the books I read in the second half of October, which is also a fair few. So without further ado, I'm going to jump straight in. Let's start with the book I DNF'd in the second half of October, and that was Monstrous Volume 1. This is the first trade paperback of a comic book series called Monstrous. It is sort of fantasy science fiction. It's one of those ones that seems to kind of blend the two. There's not much to say about this because obviously I did DNF it. I read about half of it and it's gorgeously drawn. The artwork is stunning. Really creative, interesting world and I didn't DNF it because I think it's a bad series. I just wasn't really prepared for how gory it is. So it is a horror comic book series and I in the past have really enjoyed horror comic book series. Lock and Key is one of my favourite comic book series but this one just what its elements of horror were things I don't do well with so in particular there was a lot of sort of like dissecting of creatures and people and experimenting on um characters in this world um they're not all like human beings there there's a mixture and I do not do well with that that is like one of those things that just really creeps me out and that I really don't like and particularly in this situation where it is drawn so you're not just reading about it you're visualising it. It's been visualised there for you on the page and I just felt kind of ugh when I was reading it so I wasn't enjoying it um, and I just decided not for me unfortunately. So I think if you like horror, fantasy, science fiction, comic books, uh, beautifully drawing and you don't think that's something that would bother you then this is still worth checking out but if you're like me and that's something that really unsettles you and makes you feel a bit queasy then probably give it a miss. But let's then get on to the books I did finish. I guess while we're talking about comic books, I'll briefly mention the one comic book I did finish in this half of the month, and that is Paper Girls Volume 3. This is not my favourite so far of the Paper Girls comic book series, which is a science fiction comic book series that starts in the 1980s but involves a lot of time travel. So in this issue we went back in time. So there's a lot of like jumping in time periods, but we follow a group of four girls around sort of 12, 13 who are paper delivery girls um, who get caught up in this kind of time travel science fiction stuff and you're figuring it out, you don't know really what's going on but there seems to be a lot of different elements at play and you're you're learning about it as the, the comic book progresses and I like the artwork and I'm enjoying the story and I didn't dislike volume 3, it's just not my favourite so far um, but I will be picking up volume 4 and continuing on with this series, um, I can't really say much more about what happens in volume 3 because obviously that would be spoilers but I think this is definitely a series worth checking out. Let's continue on with our themes, so let's stick with science fiction um, to carry us over to the next two books which are actually the second and third in a science fiction series and um, those are part of the Murderbot Diary series by Martha Wells. So I read books two and one which are Artificial Condition which is book two and Rogue Protocol which is book three. I actually listened to these on audiobook via Scribd um, which I think works quite well because they are quite short novellas. So I feel like I'm not like spending a lot of money on something that is quite a quick read for me. However, if you'd rather read them, then I'd still highly recommend them. They're completely worth it. I love this series. This has become one of my favourite science fiction series. I'm so impressed with it. It kind of plays on that um, trope of the depressed robot that you see in The Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy with a um, Marvin. It's quite like a famous image in science fiction but it really delves deeper into that and it follows this android who has a lot of like social anxiety. They really don't like spending a lot of time around um, human beings. They find emotions kind of difficult to process and communicate. Um, they really prefer to keep their helmet covering their face at all times so um, that they can keep that distance and honestly their ideal situation is to just sit in its pod all day watching soap operas and I just think for this being an android, so not a human being, is one of the most relatable characters I have ever read. I just 
relate so hard to <laughs> this Android. I don't know if that's weird, but I think other people do too from reading other people's reviews on Goodreads. Um, and I, I love that. I, I, I just love the character of Murderbot. They're this genderless android who prefers to be that way as well. They don't really want to identify as a he or a she. They have like a very strong personality. They're not just a machine with no personality and they actually have hacked their own government module, which means they're completely in control of themselves. And obviously I can't say too much about what happens in books three and four because they're following on from book one. But in book three I can say that Murderbot is going back and learning more about their past. They're sort of like delving deeper and want some answers to some questions that they have. Um, so that's following on from book one. And in book three um, we kind of learn a little bit more of what's going on um, kind of in the, the larger solar system and space because these are set in space. Book two I adored. I think book two is my favourite so far, uh, which I'm not sure is the general consensus. Book three I didn't love as much as book two, but I still think they're all four star reads. It's still fantastic and there is a fourth one waiting for me to listen to it, so I'm excited for that. The only thing about book two that I like <laughs> didn't dislike, but I think is quite funny and couldn't help but think throughout it is that like the human characters are so stupid. And throughout book two I was like, why are you doing the things you are doing? Just listen to Murderbot. And I think that's just because you're in the head of Murderbot and they are just exasperated by all of the stupid decisions the humans are making. I then read a book from the library which I didn't love quite as much unfortunately and that is The Goddess Chronicle by Natsuo Kirino and this is translated from Japanese. Bye. Uh, Rebecca Copeland. Um, so this was originally written in Japanese and is actually a retelling of a Japanese creation myth. Um, it's published by Canongate who published like a long series of myth retellings by different authors. And I usually love those books but this is not one of my favourite. And it's a shame because for me the writing in this just felt a little bit lacklustre. It didn't feel badly written but one of the things I expected from the setting of this book was it to be very atmospheric and it just didn't do that. I didn't find it a very evocative reading experience, which, like I said, this is a translated novel so it's difficult to pinpoint that to the original writing or the translation, but all I can say is that as a book in English it just felt a bit lacklustre for me. I didn't find it very emotional or evocative or atmospheric, like I said. I'm not that familiar with Japanese mythology. I knew a little bit about part of the myth in this book um, about um, kind of the first couple um, and their first child um, but mostly don't really know anything about Japanese myth so I really enjoyed that element of it. I, I love myth retellings whether they are Greek, Roman or other cultures so I did enjoy that and I do think the premise of this is really interesting. It follows a uh, young girl growing up on a secluded island with very strict like cultural laws and like roles that they're all to fulfil and she has been sort of dubbed as the impure one of her and her sister and her sister is to be the next like high priestess and she's the sort of yang to her yin or uh, ver vice versa so and um, she's kind of had that role set out from her from the beginning and things um, don't go very well for her and we also follow some of the characters into the underworld where we meet some of the goddesses of um, this world sounds amazing and it starts off really well, I find it really interesting but like I said it just didn't keep my attention as I was going on, I just despite it being such an interesting premise felt a little bit bored as the story progressed which was such a shame but it did inspire me to read more Japanese mythology, I think I from this book the elements I found really interesting of it have made me want to read more Japanese mythology. So um, it wasn't an altogether terrible reading experience, I just not a new favourite. I also read a Juliet and Marillier book this month, or finished a Juliet and Marillier book this month. This is Child of the Prophecy. This is the third in her Seven Water series, which is one of my absolute favourite series of all time as of this year. Starts with Daughter of the Forest. Have you heard me talk about it yet? I think so. <laughs> but this is book three and these books are set in medieval Ireland and are fantasy books involving the Fae. Um, although you, our protagonists are humans, although they sometimes have like, like sort of healing powers or like prophecy, but actually in this book our protagonist is a sorceress, so she's probably the most magical central character so far of the series. Um, she has been raised to practice magic. 
and she's quite different from the protagonists of the first two books so because all these books are in a series but they follow different members of the same family over generations so you meet the characters from books one and two in this book that are still alive but they are not the central characters anymore our central character is Fania, who, like I said, is this young sorceress. And unlike the first two books, she's a lot less sure in herself. She has a lot of questions, isn't sure about her future, her destiny, what the right path for her is, has a lot of outside influences trying to kind of manipulate her and make her into somebody. And you are constantly wondering what path she's going to follow, what decisions she's going to take and how her life is going to unfold. And there's just never any certainty in these books. I find them to be complete roller coasters of emotions. I'm constantly on tender hooks to see what's going to happen with all the characters. I find them a little bit stressful but in a really good way because I'm so invested in the characters' lives and I adore them. I adored number three as much as I've endured in... I've, I adored book three as much as I adored books one and two. It took a little bit of getting into. Um, it's a bit of a slow starter because you're kind of getting to know Fonya in the environment she's grown up in and she isn't initially in Seven Waters, which is um, where the family is from. So I think the action really kicks off when she gets to Seven Waters, but that's not to say the lead up to Seven Waters is bad. It's just like slow and then speed. <laughs> if that makes sense. You like slowly build up, follow her on her journey, get to know the people in her life and then boom, boom, boom. And it's amazing. Juliette Morelli's writing is absolutely stunning and I can't recommend this series more highly. I read two more books on the second half of October and they are both fantasy books. The first one is Veins of Magic. This is the second book in the Otherworld series by Emma Hamm which starts off um, with the first book being a retelling of Beauty and the Beast and we follow the same characters in the second book but I would say it's really not a retelling anymore. The first book in the series kind of follows the similar initial premise to Beauty and the Beast um, but by the time you're following the narrative of the second book, it doesn't really hold those elements anymore. It's got like very much its own plot. And these again are kind of inspired by uh, Irish and Celtic folklore. And we follow our protagonist, Sorka, who's a young healer woman who is on a quest to kind of cure this blood beetle plague that is ravaging the land and gets sent by the fairies to this island um, where they say there is a fairy that can help her. And that's how like book one sets itself up and then book one ends on quite the cliffhanger but thankfully things pick back up in book two and you get a satisfactory ending because this is a duology. There are other books in this series which are other fairy tale retellings by Emma Hamm but these two books, um, the first and second in the series, sort of wrap up their own story about Sorka and um, the beast character Eamon. So I enjoyed this one as much as the first one. I was already invested in the characters' lives so I was really pleased to see how those unfolded. These are like high fantasy books, there's a lot of like war and battle in this second book and kind of that side of high fantasy that um, is more prominent in the second one than it was in the first one but they are also very much romance novels and um, you are very much following the development of this relationship between the two central characters and I really enjoyed seeing how that unfolded and what was in store for them and oh my gosh was this book heart-wrenching but yeah I would highly recommend this duology. And lastly the next book I read was actually also a retelling of Beauty and the Beast and that is simply called Beauty by Robin McKinley. This is my second book by Robin McKinley. She's quite a well-known fantasy author who again I started reading this year and I really really enjoyed this book. Now it is very much a traditional Beauty and the Beast retelling like if you're familiar with the Disney version like the main elements of the story and overarching plot is that of the kind of Disney Beauty and the Beast, the traditional Beauty and the Beast that lots of people are familiar with. So it's not like full of twists and turns and surprises, although it's a much like more intricately woven world because it's like more padded out than um, like a short fairy tale can be, like it's a full, full novel um, and you get to learn a lot about Beauty's upbringing and sort of the initial premise is slightly different because her and her family are originally quite wealthy and live in the city and um, but due to some like um, ships that go missing they lose their fortune and have to move to the countryside and um, so kind of lose their fortune and um, other than that like I said like this book isn't going to like completely rework your idea of Beauty and the Beast and like 
change the storyline in the way that perhaps Emma Hamm's series does um, after that initial premise but it's so beautifully written and gorgeous that I didn't care. I loved following Beauty's journey and there's something quite nice about kind of having an idea of where things are going because they're a retelling of a story you know. I, I just loved the characters so much and I just think Robin McKinley has this way of writing fantasy which is almost quite quaint like it's not super fast paced or intense or like dangerous and full of battles and wars it's like just quite slow and unfolding and follows relationships and characters um, and kind of just develops in that way and I really just like her writing. I've definitely become a big fan after reading this and the previous book I read by her which was called Chalice and I'll be reading more books by her. So I enjoyed this novel and I think if you like the story of Beauty and Beast then you will like this book. But those are all of the books I read in the second half of October. I am in the middle of almost finished a few other books um, which I presumably will be telling you about in November so stay tuned for that. Let me know if you would like me to continue sort of doing wrap ups in the middle of the month and at the end of the month um, to kind of just spread out the reviews a little bit and I'd love to hear from you if you have read or are interested in reading any of the books in this video. I love chatting to you about what I've been reading but until next time happy reading and I'll see you all again soon. Bye!